we're asking whether foreign aid given to poor countries intended to increase economic growth in those countries actually did so. There is a lot of research on this. Uh, the first paper is in 1972, and there's been a stack since then. But even in the most influential studies, there are large disagreements about whether the effect is uh, even zero, or positive or negative. I'm Michael Clemens from the Center for Global Development, and I'm talking about a paper called uh, Counting Chickens When They Hatch. I have three co-authors, uh, Steve Radelet of Georgetown University, Rikhil Bhavnani of the University of Wisconsin, and Sammy Bazzi of Boston University, all of whom used to be my colleagues at the Center for Global Development. It is not an easy question to answer whether uh, aid affects growth when all kinds of things are affecting growth at the same time, civil wars and public health conditions and uh, the climate and uh, changes of government. Uh, that's a lot of statistical noise from which the effect of uh, one particular thing, foreign aid, is difficult to sort out. Suppose you have a flow of foreign aid going into a particular country, and 10 years later you see something happening to growth. Uh, it could be that whatever was affecting that growth pattern, let's say a post-conflict situation, a country is growing because it's recovering from a war, also affected the aid flow. So the aid was coming in to support post-conflict recovery. It could be then that things that are causing the growth are what are causing the aid. It could also be that it was the aid inflow that caused the growth uh, to rise 10 years later. There is a chicken and an egg problem because it's, it's difficult to tell whether uh, growth outcomes were influencing aid or aid was influencing growth outcomes when you observe a, an aid and growth outcome together. Uh, difficult to sort out whether what part of that relationship between aid and growth reflects just the causation of growth by aid. What we do in this paper is look at what happens to growth after particular aid inflows. One important thing you need to settle is when you're going to look for those effects. You can't look for them immediately the next day after the aid arrives because any big investment like a road or a port or an agricultural project needs time for its effects to be realized. You also can't look for them too far in the future because lots of stuff, lots of other things could happen in the meanwhile and it's a bit of an art to find exactly the right time. We look uh, about five to 10 years after aid comes in for growth effects. Another thing you've got to sort out is what kind of aid you're looking at and whether that type of aid was intended to promote growth in the first place. But what we leave out is things like military aid, things like humanitarian assistance after an emergency, and also things whose growth effects might take a very, very long time, a, a gender empowerment project, uh, a, a campaign to eliminate smallpox. These things might affect economic growth, but certainly not in five to 10 years to any substantial degree. We look at things like uh, transportation projects, agricultural sector projects, banking sector projects, a project to build a road, to build a port, to support an airport. So now we're looking at the right aid over the right time period. The challenge is to establish the effect of that aid over that time period on growth. And here, the challenge is to make sure that we are controlling for other characteristics of countries that can affect growth and that can affect aid at the same time. Things like the quality of governance or civil conflict or weather patterns. Uh, and not just control for them, but control for them in uh, standardized ways. Because if different studies control for different things, their results don't end up being comparable and you have a concaphony of different results. We find that aid inflows to all poor countries collectively over the last half century from all donors are followed on average by a rise in economic growth. Now, it's not a large rise. Uh, it's not in every country by any means. It's a highly variable. There are many countries that get foreign aid and have negative growth. And it also seems to exhibit diminishing returns. That is, at high levels of aid, it's harder and harder to detect any additional uh, impact of, of economic, uh, on economic growth. Which leads me to a second implication, which is that foreign aid by itself probably can never be a growth strategy for uh, the economies of large parts of the developing world. The primary determinant of their economic success over long periods is going to come from other areas, from better governance, from uh, labor mobility, from trade, from investment. And that's why in our research at the Center for Global Development, we study aid, but we also study uh, many of these other areas as well.